here's another writing lesson. Remember, it's what it says on the screen there. Do not write so you can be understood. Write so that you cannot be misunderstood. Yeah. So make your writing clear and concise. So here's an idea, um, a structure of the writing process. And this is for however many words you have to write. You have to bear this process in mind. First of all, why you are writing and who you are writing to, what kind of writing you are doing. And you're going to make some, uh, do some planning, decide on the order and the shape, introduction, headings, ending. And then you're going to write the work and rewrite it, proofread, most importantly, and then your final copy. Now, in the exam, you won't have time for all of this in detail, but you have to make sure <coughs> that, so there's, an, there's a layout of the exams. So if, if you've got 60 minutes, you need to spend 30 minutes per question, approximately. Um, and for the 21 mark question, this is how you should plan your time. Five minutes planning, 25 minutes writing, five minutes proofreading. So try to set it up like that. Try to get used to doing the work in that amount of time. Limit yourself to that amount of time so you can get used to what it will be like in the exam. Because, of course, in the exam, there's a lot more pressure and stress involved. So... Um, planning for any writing task, but in your case, the exam, you're going to have your introduction, which is about what you are going to write about, then your paragraphs based on the bullet points in the question paper, and the keywords in the piece, the little description on what you have to um, write about. Um, so your bullet points will give you these paragraphs. If you find it difficult to decide on when to start a new paragraph, let the bullet points guide you. And then your conclusion. Now, if you bear in mind that your introduction should always be what you are going to write about and your conclusion should always be what you wrote about or a summary, then that kind of makes it a bit easier already. So here's an example of an article that you can look at to, uh, as a guide. So there's your headline. The first paragraph introduces what your article is about. And the last paragraph is the summary or conclusion. Now here in the middle, you've got a few, well, you've got a couple of paragraphs and this person decided to use subheadings, which you don't need to use, but you can use them if it makes it easier for you to structure your work. And you can actually transform the bullet points into subheadings easily enough. Here's an example of a speech. So as you can see, it's a little bit more informal. Fellow students, I would like to tell you a rather upsetting story. And you can also think about the speech in the way that you should think about your presentation for level two. Um, it's a very similar activity. Then there's a report, which you need to know about for the reform, um, the reformed functional skills. Um, there's, again, it has a title. And look, an introduction. This report will look at, you see, it's just stating the obvious. This report will look at the effect that the new road near Moton will have on local people. And then you've got your conclusion. The new road will be a positive thing, blah, 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 right? Then here you've got your um, subheadings. You've even got a table in there to present information clearly. You've got some bullet points because it's a report. So the bullet points are um, okay in a report, but in articles, the examiners don't really like them. Now this acronym, the forest, is very important to remember in your writing. And it stands for direct address, rule of three, statistics, alliteration or anecdotes, facts, opinion, rhetorical question, and emotive language or exaggeration. Now, this is important to know about for your reading exam as well as for your writing exam. And they want to see that you can use at least two of these in each piece of writing. So from now on, make sure that you include at least two of these of writing. Here's an example of direct address, a quick example. Sadly, you failed on this occasion. 
alliteration, pathetically poor. Then um, here's a rhetorical question, emotive language, disgust at the dreadful journey, statistics, and then of course, um, rule of three, fast food, comma, drink and newspapers. Okay. So now paragraphs, every, you should always start, every, every new thought needs a new paragraph. Okay, so every new, not every new, every new topic, as they say there, actually, every new topic, but leave a line open to indicate that you are starting a new paragraph. Yeah, we're not going to run out of space. Um, so leave the lines open to show the examiner you know when to start a new paragraph. Very now, write this article. Is going. This is an article for you to try. Um, so this is exactly the way it appears in the exam paper. Um, so you're going to come up with your title, introduction, paragraph one, paragraph two, and conclusion. So there are two bullet points, so maybe two paragraphs would be enough, but you can have more. Um, but give it at least those four paragraphs. So I generally say five paragraphs to be safe, to know that you're going to have 300 words in your uh, uh, the reform paper, you see there it's 21 marks, three bullet points, but the same idea applies. Remember, introduction is what you're going to write about and conclusion is what you wrote about. And then you just base it on these bullet points. So you can now take these bullet, bullet points, if you want, and transform them into um, subheadings. Yeah, so you could say the subheading is, for example, Arguments for and against the proposal. You see, I'm almost taking the whole bullet point there, but that can be your subheading. Okay. Now, to improve your writing, you need to. So you need to know when you need to, when you should use a comma. Okay. Two adjoining sentences when using joining words conjunctions. Okay. So there is there you have the list, and there you have the joining word or an and because you are joining two sentences together. Colon to introduce a list and an explanation of a statement. Yeah, so I've put the extended quotation. You can see it can be done in two different ways. It can be done with the colon and the inverted commas or the comma and inverted commas and you can have single or double. It doesn't Semicolon is, of course, the one that a lot of people struggle with. Um, it's used to join complete sentences into a single written sentence. So it's it's as if uh, a full stop would make would make you pause too long. So that's when you will use a semicolon. But make sure that it is like two independent sentences that can work independently, and you're just using it instead of a full stop. And if you are worried about using the semicolon, you can always use a conjunction, joining word, a full stop and start a new sentence um, instead, you know, if you are worried about using it and making mistakes with it. Then um, we need to think about the splice and the comma splice. Now that sentence, David dragged his heels to the shop, he was in a foul mood. Is the sentence correct? And if you think it's not, how would, how would you correct it? So there is splice and comma splice. So there's splice in this sentence. This is the way it is in the, on the previous slide. So in this sentence, there's something wrong with the sentence. It wasn't correct. And it's called a splice mistake. Okay. So there is the comma splice. So that comma would also be wrong. Yeah. So the conjunction would be fine, the semicolon fine, and the full stop is fine. So these are your options, but these two will be wrong. Then capital letters, I mean, we think it's obvious, but uh, you know, just remember, remember these things. Um, abbreviations, you can use these abbreviations. 
Then quotation marks. You can use single or double, it doesn't matter. And academic or formal writing, most importantly, do not use contractions. Write in full. Okay. So you don't say don't, you don't say I'm, you don't say can't, you don't say don't. Yeah, you write it all out. So here's a little test. Um, pause the presentation and correct these sentences before you carry on to the next slide. And there's, there's the answer. So you should actually pause on the previous slide so that you can check the answers on this one. So an apostrophes. Now, apostrophes are used, um, as you probably know, um, where to indicate missing letters. Yeah. But people can get these wrong. We also use them to indicate possession. You can see those two, yeah. And then the tricky ones. When the apostrophe goes outside of the word, the dog's bowl, yeah. More than one dog use that bowl. That's why it's the dog's bowl. I reformatted it. I reformatted the computer's hard drives. And some plurals do not end in S, and that's when the apostrophe goes before the S. Yeah, there's geese and children. And remember, it's its tail. Yeah, that's not the right one. Do you know the right one? I didn't put the right one on here, actually. But it is its without the apostrophe. The dog is wagging its some everyday examples. So let's see if you can find the mist mistakes. Is again, you can pause the presentation and try to find the mistakes, and then move on to the next one. Try to find the mistakes. And this is, of course, I mean, this is priceless because if you go to a tattoo shop where they can't, where they don't know how to use punctuation properly. Um, in the the name of the tattoo shop, then you can't expect very much from them. So you will get these mistakes tattooed onto your body. Can't think of anything worse.